Well, here we are. Um, it's been a couple hours. It's been a weird couple hours, let me tell you that. You know, um, you all know who I am by now. Big Boy Sports. And this weekend indoor football has brought us some more controversy. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you, more controversy is always the best recipe for disaster. And in the second IFL semifinal game, we'll talk about the first one in a moment, the second IFL semifinal game between the Duke City Gladiators, the two-time CIF champions, two-time back-to-back CIF champions, went up to the Phoenix Suns Arena in Arizona with Nate Davis and Drew Powell giving us a show. 58-55, 58-55, Arizona wins the game and will host the United Bowl, but, but, at the end of the game, there was some shenanigans, and it started with, after the Arizona touchdown, the game-winning touchdown, in which Duke City fumbles the kickoff, it seems like Duke City recovered to the end zone, yet I think it hit off the wall or something? And then Duke City got the ball uh, somewhere, I think it was like at the, like the four or five yard line or something like that. And then offensive pass interference after Nick Davis throws the touchdown. And did he get it? Did, it, it honestly looked like a touchdown. It may not have been. I don't remember. I'll have to go back and look. But the offensive pass interference, I looked at it from 77 different angles. I looked at it 77 times. And I just could not figure out for the life of me, was this really pass interference? I don't know. I don't think it was. I really don't. I'm confused. I'm lost here. Was it pass interference on the offense or was it not? I don't know. That's what I was trying to figure out the entire time and I couldn't figure it out. But in any case, then Duke City trotted out the field goal unit and missed the field goal. So indoor kickers... Just have not had a great year at all. Can't say I blame them. Can't say I blame them. But man, what a great game. Shame it had to end like that. And then the other semifinal on Saturday night on Stadium. And if you had, you know, issues with YouTube, you know, you should have just went to Stadium. Uh, you know, I mean, Lydian Stadium was having issues as well, apparently. Some people reported issues with Stadium on different services that... Stadium provides, and I've had issues with Stadium a couple times this year myself, so I know your pain. But it didn't matter if there were issues or not with Stadium. There were issues with my Frisco fighters who couldn't seem to capitalize off of the, off the, um, the mistakes that you know the Pirates and Massachusetts made at times. And in the end, the Pirates' defense overwhelmed Frisco to the point where it felt like a blowout. I mean, 43-22. Definitely time to give up the sticks, Briscoe. Give up the sticks. Give up your st- give up your seats to the United Bowl. You're not going. The Pirates of Massachusetts, who've won what ten straight games now, ten, eight or nine. They, what is it like ten straight games now? I think it's like ten straight games that the Pirates have won. Unbelievable defense. Unbelievable. The offense needs a little work, but unbelievable defense. And now the matchup is set. Set up perfectly. Number one, Arizona. This is number two, Massachusetts. The Rattlers trying to get their seventh crown. Second in the IFL. The Pirates trying to come on over from the NAL from where they couldn't win its idol to now winning its idol in the IFL. And it'd be a great first year story. But the Pirates, if they could win this game at the Phoenix Suns Arena next Sunday at 5 o'clock Central Time, 6 Eastern, with like 3 Pacific, I think. So, yeah. And that's going to be a little weird overlap because at the end, it's going to be at the end of the late NFL games. We full this, we full, like, in, like early in the uh, beginning of the Sunday night game. It's going to be a little weird. But we can get through it. It... it it's the perfect, it's honestly the best time they possibly could have had for that game, you know. But it is what it is there, man. And here we go. 
Pirates defense versus Drew Powell and Arizona Rattlers offense. It's really the story, and it won't be the same story as it was a couple weeks back when Massachusetts just blew all over Arizona, just beat them up, threw them down a ditch, and left them there to die. It's not, it's not going to be that same story it was a few weeks ago, but I still think the Pirates will win. And keep in mind, I'm actually, I'm actually surprised I'm even perfect on my picks for the for these playoffs. I'm really surprised at that. Very surprised at that. Um, but yeah, United Bowl next Sunday. Boy, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, 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 fun times, man. I can tell you that right now. I'm ready. I'm ready for it all. And now, we have something else coming from the CIF, so here it is. Another team has been announced. That's right, this was, this was a team that was announced, you know, just a couple days ago. The Rapid City Marshals is what they will be called, and they will play in Rapid City, South Dakota, at an arena where they've had an indoor team in the past, and also some basketball and, like, minor league hockey teams, you know, semi-pro basketball, not major league anything like that semi-pro basketball semi-pro hockey you know they have that they've had that in South Dakota as well at Rapid City and 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 that is now the CIF's 13th team so what will the CIF do is there more expansion coming or is somebody getting on the chopping block is somebody getting chopped up I don't know yet I really don't because that aside from the fact that Billings you know like from the Billings release a couple months ago where it said that Denver and Rapid City were coming that's that's been it that, that's the last piece of juicy info about CIF expansion that has been there you know so who knows what's gonna happen next you know for the CIF I really don't know yet I really don't know that there could be a contraction a little bit because we don't know what the Texas teams and Oklahoma are going to do yet. And, you know, there there's also, you know, there could be another team somewhere in lurk, lurking, working, you know, working in the background. There could be another team lurking, but we don't know that yet. And last but not least, let's talk about the AWFC, the America West Football Conference, the Tri-City Rush. They are the ones that have hoisted up the AWFC Championship Trophy. They have won the AWFC title game against the Idaho Horsemen, who after beating the Oregon High Desert Storm in the semifinal, you know, they fall to the rush in a field that looked, and I, I saw some picks from the game, um, in a field that just looked absolutely dreadful, as per usual in the AWFC. But hey, it is what it is, you know, you know, step below, you know, that tier below the CIF, you know, that type of football is just going to be the type of football that's for fun. I even saw the little trophy. It wasn't, wasn't the greatest trophy, but hey, it's a trophy nonetheless. It's a team that has won a championship, so congrats to the Tri-City Rush. You're the second to last champion to crown your champion. Or rather, you're the second to last league to crown, to crown your champion for the 2021 season and now we have just one more game and that means there's going to be one more this week in indoor football for the 2021 season and then there will be monthly updates thereafter and then who knows when will the season for 2022 start and what's going to happen in between this time I don't know yet I really don't know this is a weird year to be completely honest with you. So, whatever the season starts, hopefully it'll be like around March. You know, March, maybe February too. I could I could do IFL in February again, like it was in 2019. I can do a little bit of that. That sounds a little spicy. But again, who knows what's going to happen. And uh, I'm just as excited as you are for the United Bowl. So, I'll see you all next Sunday for the recap of the United Bowl and whatever else may happen in between for this week. And tomorrow I will see you to recap college football for week one of the season. And with all that being said, Big Boy Sports signing out. See you soon.